Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and I'm excited to be starting a new category with you today. This is category number 22, Tackling the Text Tool. And that is a lot of T's, and that is appropriate because the text tool in the main tool palette is the thing that looks like a capital T. So there you go, we're in the text tool now. And in the text tool, we get a text menu. Now the text tool is going to be where we're going to deal with things like the titles, but we can also apply text, uh, attach them to measures as well. And we know that we can attach expression text as, to measures as well. So there's a little bit of overlap here, but there is some subtle differences between how um, the text block attached to a measure works versus uh, expressions. More often than not, you're going to want to use expressions, but there may be some rare instances where using a text block is a better solution. And the important thing to realize is that in the text tool, there's actually two modes to using the text tool, and you'll see them on the bottom. There's assigned to measure and assigned to page. Assigned to page will usually be checked uh, first by default. And this is just telling you that whatever text block that you add is going to be attached to the page itself and not attached to a measure. It's very simple to add a text block in Finale once you're in the text tool. Um, depending on which mode you're in, in this case I'm in assigned to page, uh, it works the same way anyway, but you just double click in the score and you'll get a little uh, gray box with a cursor and then you can literally just start typing. just like that, and you have a new text block. Now, if I go into the other mode and assign it to measure, I do get a slightly different cursor, and I hope you can see it on my screen, but there's an arrow pointing down towards the nearest staff. If I flip over to just below the flute part here, you'll see the arrow point towards the flute part, and if I go a little bit further, you'll see it pointing towards the oboe. It's just important to realize where uh, that arrow is pointed because that is the staff that the text block will be attached to when you double click. So in this case, I'm going to do it up here anyway, uh, pointing towards the flute part and double click. And now I can enter a, if I can spell, a measure attached text block. There you go. And you'll notice some color things here. So that measure attached text block gets colored red. The regular page attached text blocks get colored black. And of course, the expressions get colored green. So that's a great way for you to recognize which is which. All right, so now um, uh, just go back to here. I'm going to go back to assign to page. Once we have a text block in the score, of course, all the text blocks will get these little handles so we can move them around and do lots of things with them. Uh, we can edit these text blocks easily enough just by double clicking the handle and you'll get your cursor back, you'll get that little gray box back and you can go in here and you can highlight and you know click to your mouse to, to make changes or anything. You can keep typing, et cetera, anything that you, you want to do. You can even put in carriage return, so you press return to get, uh, get it on different lines, all, all kinds of things that you would do with a regular word processor. The other way to get to that uh, point is just select the uh, handle there and press return, and that will bring you back into that um, edit box. We can also right click and choose edit text and this will also do the same thing and then there's one final way to actually edit the text from the text menu with a text block selected there is an option towards the bottom called edit text and this will bring up a uh, dedicated window that will allow you to you know type the text or do whatever you need to do to this text within this window there's not necessarily an advantage to doing this um, you can do it here or you can do it in the score. Uh, you know, it's just as easy to do it in the score because then you can see what you're doing because as soon as you start typing, nothing's going to appear until you press the OK button. Um, so this, I think this is an old way of doing this, but uh, it's still available to you if you want. Um, it's most of the time it's just easy enough to just double click and start editing. Now, once you have your text here, you can do lots of things that you can do with a word processor that you think you could do. You can change uh, the font. Uh, all this stuff happens in the text menu in the first section. So we can change the font if we want, uh, a little funky font here. Um, we can change the size. There's a bunch of preset sizes. If we wanted to make that a lot bigger, we could do that. Um, there's also uh, the other option here, which will allow you to uh, use a custom size that doesn't exist in those preset sizes, like you know 13, for example. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, the increase and decrease. So that's shift command period, shift command comma, if you don't want to go into this menu. We'll just uh, increase it and decrease it by one point uh, respectively. So shift command period to make it one point bigger, to, uh, one point smaller, shift command comma, and that's how that works. 
Uh, we can also do things like uh, change the style. So we have bold, italic, underline, and hidden options. And let me use a better uh, font to uh, make this uh, appear better. Um, so we'll go in here and we'll do bold. And of course, there's uh, shortcuts for this too. So that's shift command B, I, U, and H. So we don't always have to go into this menu. Shift command B, I, U, H. Uh, shift command U to underline, I to italicize, and H will hide it. So you can, you'll can you be able to see it in the score, but it will never actually print. And of course, we can do any combination of these if we don't want to italicize, if we don't want to bold, uh, if we don't want to hide. You can do any any combination of, of whatever you want to do there. And there's some other options here for uh, baseline shift tracking and superscript, which I'm going to talk about at a later date and um, because it gets a little bit uh, more technical and a little bit advanced so we'll talk about that separately um, and then there's also this character settings which is uh, option command T if you don't want to go into the menu option command T will pull up this character settings window and this will actually allow you to do all of these things that I just talked about in one uh, shot so you can you know change the font you can change the size uh, you can uh, do bold, uh, underline, whatever you want, and of course you can change the baseline, shift, superscript, and tracking, and all that stuff, all in one shot without having to do it separately. There's one other thing I glossed over in the size menu here, which is the fixed size. So Finale scales everything, so the page can be scaled, the system can be scaled, the staffs can be scaled, and the notes can themselves can be scaled. Um, when you choose a fixed size staff, it's going to fix the size of the staff to that no matter what the scaling is. So regardless of the page scaling, with this 14 point uh, text, it will always be 14 point text. And that 14 point will sort of match that version of the text if it were put into a word processor, for example. So no matter what you do to the scaling with this fixed size uh, chosen, um, it will be a true point uh, size font. So. Uh, there's reasons to use this. It gets a little bit complicated with the scaling, so I'm dedicating a whole video on fixed sizes later. Suffice it to say, for now, I'll just kind of skip over that. And one other thing to be aware of is that you don't have to do this all at once. Now, you've seen me just sort of select this entire text block, but you can select a portion of it if you just want to, say, not underline that or italicize that or something, or you can, of course, you know, change the font of you know just one word we could do that absolutely we can change the size of just this word if we wanted to so there's all kinds of things that you can mix and match within this text block uh, just easily enough like that and you don't always have to go into the text block to highlight something to make these changes uh, sometimes if you need to do it all at once you can just kind of click the handle there and then go into these options and when you choose the font thing it's not going to tell you what it is but you can certainly just choose a font and it will change that entire text block to that font even if it was already set to different fonts um, just choosing a single font will change all of it to a single font and we can do the same thing with size it'll say 12 now this is a mixed font I think it's 14 and 12 or something I, I can't remember what, what I did two minutes ago but if we just set a size um, it will change that entire text block to 10 we could uh, choose to underline it and it will underline the whole thing and if we choose to underline again it will actually get rid of it I believe oh no you actually have to do uh, choose plain even though it says plain there you go. That's how you would deal with that. Um, so just selecting the handle and using these options here will, uh, you know, effectively change everything all at once for you if you had a mix situation that you want to undo. One other thing to mention, when you add a new text block, um, it will always choose a default font. Now, in this case, this is, happens to be Times New Roman uh, size 10 plain. This option to select that font uh, as a default can be changed in the document options. If we go into document options under fonts, if we go to where it says text, there's an option here for text block. And this is where this is set. And you'll see that it's set to Times New Roman 12 plain. If I were to change this to something else, oops, my window went over there, uh, we can, let's just say 15 bold or something, right? It's not going to change the text blocks that already exist in my file. But the next time I add a text block, it will use that new uh, setup. So that's Times New Roman 15 bold, all right? So again, this option will only is only forward looking. Uh, let's just set this back to normal so I don't get all screwed up here. 
and you'll see that after I said it, this hasn't changed at all. So uh, there is a way to set the the text uh, by default when you for when you double click into a new text block. The next thing we want to understand about text blocks is the attachment um, parameters in terms of where the text blocks are attached. So the first thing to know is that when you attach a text block, um, it will always get attached to the linked parts as well. So I've been doing this on text one, uh, page one of the score, but if I go into uh, the flute part, you'll see all of these new text blocks. And in fact, on every single part, um, all of those new text blocks will appear. So that's the first thing to realize. And I'm going to talk about how to deal with linked parts and text blocks later, but just be aware that any page attached text block is going to be assigned uh, to every page, every um, parts on that particular page. So if it's attached to page one, it gets attached to page one in the score in every single part. The measure attached text blocks are a little bit different. These get attached to specific measures. In this case, uh, measure, what is that, three, um, six of the flute part. So this is only going to appear uh, in the flute part actually in the flute two part because it's sharing a staff, but not in the oboe part, not in the English horn, etc. So the uh, measure assigned text blocks are, are a little bit different in that regard. The other aspect to how this is attached is whether or not it's attached to a single page or multiple pages. And this is actually important when you do things uh, like dealing with you know these uh, titles that go above the second page. You'll see that it will repeat this, uh, this title um, on every single page going forward. And it's not like I had to put in separate text blocks for every single one of these. This is just a single text block assigned to page two through the end. Um, so how you deal with this is uh, kind of the, the next important thing to understand. So where we want to go to deal with this is the frame attributes for the text block. And we can get there several ways. My favorite way is to just right click the handle and it's the second option here, edit frame attributes. And this brings up the frame attributes dialog box. There's another way to get there. I think we can um, shift double click. We'll also bring up the frame attributes. We can also have the, um, the, the handle selected and just press shift return. And that will also pull up the frame attributes. And I believe you can, there's also an option in the menu directly for frame attributes. And you'll see that there's also a uh, shortcut, which is shift command T. So a bunch of different ways to get to this very important window, the frame attributes. Once we're here, there's several things going on, and there's alignment and positioning options, which is again, this is going to be another part of another video, which I'll, so I'll skip over for now. But what I'm, but what I'm most concerned about now is the top portion of this, where it says attach to, and there's two options, page and measure. So ver first of all, off the bat, um, this is where you could actually convert any text block from a page attached. Um, a text block to a measure attached text block. So if I just choose measure instead of page here, you'll see this text block actually go down here. It'll get attached to the measure and you'll actually see it get smaller. And again, this has to do with the scaling issues. The system is scaled down. So that's why this 12 point font got a lot smaller. Um, but let's just go back and go back to that uh, edit frame attributes. So that would be one quick way to just convert a text block from page to measure attached. But let's talk about what we can do with page attached text because there's some options here. We have single page and you can choose whatever page you want. So if you wanted this to go on page two instead of page one, just do that and you'll see it jump over there. Just gonna undo that. There we go. Um, we have all pages and when we choose that option, you'll, you've guessed it, it will put it on every single page from one through the end of the score, wherever that may be. When you do attach text blocks to multiple pages, just be uh, aware that they will all move together. So if you actually start dragging this around, you'll see it dragging on page two as well. Um, and once again, these text blocks, they're attached to the score, they're attached to the parts the same way. So this uh, text block will appear on every page, on every part, uh, just like that. So um, this is exactly how this works. Uh, the other options here, instead of all pages, we could choose page range. So now I can say, you know what, I just want this on page one through, let's say, page three. And when I do that, you'll see it appear on page one, two, and three, and then not on page four through the end. So that's another way to do that. Uh, our other options there. 
Oh, the other thing about the page range, you know, this is how you do things like this uh, text block here where it's where you have the title starting on page two and going to the end. The way that you do that is actually choose uh, the first page that you want it to start on, page two. And if you leave the through field blank, uh, in finale speak, when you leave through blank, it means to the end. So no matter what page is at the end, it will always keep going. So this is important because if you add pages, uh, the text block will continue on. If you were to just fill out the last page in your score, like let's say you knew it was page 25, if you added page 26, that text block would not appear on page 26. So it's important to keep this uh, blank if you really want this to be two through the end. So page two through the end, click OK, and now you see it disappear from page one, but now it's on two through every single page to the end of the score. Let's go back here. What are our other options? Um, we have the options of choosing just the left pages. And again, this will work similarly with the page range. Uh, you have left or right pages. And um, again, it will work the same. So you could choose you know, page two through uh, six, for example. And you would get just the left pages, page two through six. So there's on two, but not on three on four, but not on five, on six, not on seven, and then that's the end of it. So a lot of different options. And realize that left pages are usually the second page. The, the first page is the right page. If you think about a book, page one is the right page, page two is the left page. Um, so uh, left pages are going to be even, um, uh, right pages will be odd. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can attach these uh, text blocks. If you just need it on a single page, if you just need it on all pages, on a page range, um, there's, there's a bunch of different options for you to use there. As far as measure attached text blocks are concerned, there's not really all that many options in the edit frame attributes for here. I mean, you just tell it what measure it gets attached to, and you can just simply you know, change that to measure five, and it will just move it over here instead. Uh, or you can actually change which staff it gets attached to. So I can attach it to the English horn you know, measure seven instead and get it to move all the way over here. So um, just be aware that you can't actually, once it's attached, you can't actually like move it over here. This is still attached to the English horn. So if I were to look at this, it says uh, English horn measure seven. It's just that now it's this much farther to the uh, you know upwards and left of the English horn. It's not actually attached to the flute one, two staff here. So just be aware of that when you're moving around these um, these text blocks. But again, we could do this, attach it to bar six, and you see it retained that up and left position. So that's why it it did that weird thing. But uh, uh, but that's how that works. There's not a whole lot of different uh, options for your measure attached text blocks, but that's what they are. Okay, and then a couple more things. Obviously, to delete a text block, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is just, you know, click one of the handles and press the delete key. We could also just right click and choose delete. That's another way to do it. And of course, a lot of these contextual menu items, if you right click on a text block with a text tool, all of those uh, contextual options are available if you use the, the uh, cursor instead of the text tool. In fact, you get the same exact uh, contextual menu when you right click. You can also drag them around the same way. Um, so you, know, you can get into the edit frame attributes right from the selection tool. You can edit the text right from the selection tool, all kinds of things you can do here. And of course, you can just select it and delete it, and it goes away. So there's that too. And I think if you actually have something selected and press return, it will take you to the text tool where you can actually edit the text block right from within the score. So that's one more thing that you can do with the selection tool. And so yeah, I think that covers it. That's pretty much the basics for adding, editing, and attaching text blocks uh, to your score. Um, so yeah, so there you go. We're well on our way to tackling the text tool. The next thing we're going to talk about is the inserts, which is really important. That's how we get some of these titles. You'll see that these are gray. That's how we can uh, deal with the information in the file info of the score manager and how we can get these fields to appear in the score. I'm going to talk about all of this uh, in the next video and this whole section on inserts, which is a really important thing to, uh, to deal with. So that's coming up next. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to do that. And yeah, that's it. I will see you soon on the next video.